Hello, hello, and grand golden morning. Hello and good morning, all. Lakeisha McKnight is here, your Bible teacher, your Bible teacher, your friend. <laughs> Welcome to the virtual Bible study, everyone. It is Friday, May 1st of 2020. We are live right here from the city of Chesapeake, Virginia, within the U.S. of A. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully everyone is having a pleasant morning thus far. Okay, so we're gradually getting into this brand new day that the Lord has enabled us to see. I'm just grateful. I'm honored uh, for this opportunity once again to pour nuggets of value, you know, into each and every one of your lives. I'm just extremely excited about what is to come. I mean, there's only going to be better that lies ahead. And I'm so grateful and excited to be able to see it. So grateful, so excited. And so hopefully you are excited with me. And so we're going to gradually get into this thing. I know Facebook is letting you all know that uh, I'm live right now, as well as being live on several other platforms. So we are going to be getting started momentarily. And so I thank you so much for being with me here on this morning. Now, depending on where you are in the world, it could be, you know, early afternoon because I know we're in different parts of the world. And so we have different time frames or time zones. So hopefully uh, you are listening into this live or catching the replay of it. Uh, but either way, we welcome you here. OK, welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, there are many, many ways to to really participate in this virtual Bible study. But here's what I tell you. Uh, the purpose of the Bible study really is to help you to have a powerful start to your day, right? To help you to learn how to win from the inside out. And we try to do this every Monday through Saturday around 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so if you need to mark it down on your calendar, go ahead and do that so that you'll be able to be here with us. Okay, there are many, many people around the world that plugs into this. And so you're more than welcome to be here as well. So as mentioned, there are a couple ways to participate. For example, number one, you can love the stream. Okay, you can love the stream. Hit the love button. All right, hit that love button. All right, and then of course, you know, you also can comment below in the comment section. So you can leave your thoughts. You can ask a question in the comment section. And then lastly, uh, the ability to share this particular stream. You can share this stream on your timeline, a group, a fan page. You know, wherever you feel led to sharing it, go ahead and do so at this particular time. But these are just a few ways to connect with us and to participate in the virtual Bible study. And as a matter of fact, before we even start, I'm going to practice what I preach. Okay. And I'm going to share this thing out. Okay, so I'm going to share it. The first place I'm probably going to share it is going to be on my fan page. So I'm going to do that really quick. Okay, I'm going to share it there. Then I'm also going to share it inside of a group. So I'm going to go and try to share it to a group right now. Let me go ahead and do that. Got to find the group and label it here. There we go. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, yeah, so share it to two places. Just practicing what I preach as I encourage you all to share it. I said, let me go and share it as well. So, again, welcome to the virtual Bible study, everybody. So, I want to share a little bit about what to expect while we are here together. So, normally we're here for anywhere between 30 minutes to up to an hour, and this Bible study really uh, per, really takes place with two parts, okay? So when we do get onto the platforms here, you know, the thing that we do, we go over these guidelines as far as what to expect. We will engage in prayer. It's very, very important that you understand, um, you know, just under, a little, understand a little bit about, um, you know, how we need to connect with God. You know, really jump starting and having that communication with God. It's really important that our hearts and our minds are good ground that the word of God can be sown upon. Okay. 
And so after doing that, you know, we engage in part number one. Now, part number one of the virtual Bible study does involve, you know, reading the scripture consecutively. And let us check. I want to check real quick and make sure you can hear. I can hear myself clearly on these platforms. And it looks like I can. Perfect. Let's see. We'll be able to be here with. Yes. Yes. We're all good. Just want to make sure our audio is good. So, yeah. So, you know, after prayer, we engage in part one, which is reading the scripture consecutively. So as of today, we're over going to be reading over at Acts chapter one. We're going to be taking a closer look at verses 12 through 26. So Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 26 is where we are going to be. All right, so we're going to read that these verses. We're going to assess what encouraged Luke, you know, to include these verses in this particular book. And then also assess how do we apply it to our lives. We have to make the word practical. So we're going to go over that a bit. You know, and after we summarize, you know, our our discussion and our focus here with these verses, we will transition into part number two of the study. Now, part two involves a topic connected to winning souls for the kingdom. Very important that, you know, we stick with that particular focus because this is a part of what it is we've been called to do. Okay. Sharing the gospel with others. And so our focus for today, when it comes to winning souls, we're going to talk about really how do you witness to to hurting people? Because during these times today, there are many people who are hurting all around the world. So how do we witness to them? So that is going to really be our focus uh, during the latter half of this virtual Bible study. And so after discussing this primary, this, this topic here, we will summarize it. We will pray and then we will be dismissed. Okay, we will be dismissed. And so that is our flow for the virtual Bible study. And I do want to say good morning, uh, Miss Patricia Goodman. Thank you so very much. I do see you here as well. And everyone else that's gradually joining in, we appreciate you. All right. We definitely appreciate you. And good morning, of course, Brother Wendell. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Perfecto. All right, guys. So again, welcome aboard. Glad to see each and every one of you here. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So what I'm going to do right now, we're going to pray and we're going to get started. So Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you so very much for this day. This is truly the day, a day, one of the days that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, thank you for the rest that you've given us last night, early this morning. Thank you for allowing us to be in our right minds today. Thank you for this brand new day. We thank you for the activity of our limbs. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to open up our mouths to give you praise and thanks. Thank you, God. We thank you for the air that we're breathing in. We're thanking you for for just blessing us beyond measure, God. We thank you because you're King of kings and Lord of lords. There's no one like you, no one compared to you. We thank you for knowing that you are our father and you want the very best for us. You have a plan, an assignment that you would have us to fulfill. And we thank you for knowing that we were still included in that plan. And so, Lord God, even in this moment, we're just asking that you would forgive us of all sin, that you would cleanse our hearts and cleanse our minds of everything that's not of you. Every sin, every sin. We thank you that the blood of Jesus washes away the sins of this world. And so, Lord, even as we are about to dive into this word, we do ask that you would bless us with knowledge and understanding and wisdom. Help us to divide this word correctly, God, and to be able to boldly share it with others, to be able to help others to activate or reactivate their faith. And so, Father, we thank you for this time, and we thank you for technology, and we just ask that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So again, welcome aboard. Welcome to the virtual Bible study. I'm extremely, extremely excited to be here. Just grateful. Just grateful. Like, if, if 
you're not blessed with anything else, the very fact that you're here, man, that should be enough. <laughs> that should be enough right there. All right. So what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to be continuing from Acts chapter 1. We're going to start, or I should say continue once again, <laughs> starting at verse 12. Okay, and we're going to read the rest of this chapter. Now, if you've missed yesterday, which was the beginning, we read the first 11 verses. You want to go back and check that out. Now, I'm so excited. Here's why I'm excited, okay? Stay, you know, I know, I'm excited. The support group... <laughs> The support group for this virtual Bible study, I'm going to be sharing that link very soon today as well. So stay tuned. The link is coming so that you'll be able to plug into that support area. So I'm extremely excited about that. Stay tuned. Okay. Now, if you haven't loved the stream, go ahead and do that. Never too late. Okay. And definitely share this out so that people can plug in from the very beginning of this virtual Bible study. All right. So verse 12, and it reads as follows. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether the number of names was about a hundred and twenty. And said, Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained a part in this ministry. Now, this man purchased a field with the wages of iniquity and falling. Headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his entrails gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem. So that field is called, in their own language, Ekeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they proposed to Joseph called Barsabas, whose surname, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take part in this ministry, an apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. All right, everybody. Okay, so we just finished reading the rest of chapter number one of Acts. And we started at verse number 12. Okay, verse number 12 is where we continue on this morning. And so let's take a closer look. Okay, let's take a closer look. So as we continued, of course, they travel. We were talking about, you know, the apostles here. They traveled to Jerusalem, right? And uh, when they went into the room, they went into the room where, you know, they were staying. And there were just a couple of them <laughs> that were there in this upper room meeting. And, of course, we see the names of the apostles there. And so they continued there, as verse 14 says, 
with one accord in prayer. Okay, with one accord, right? And supplication, it mentions, with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brother. So we have all these people named in this prayer meeting, okay? So all of these individuals are here. But then, of course, there was one particular assignment, one thing that really needed to take place uh, because he mentioned Peter stood up and he began to share how Judas was once with them, counted amongst them. But because of what had transpired with him, someone needed to take his place, right? In okay, case someone needed to take this, take his place. So as you can see in verse 21, Right. It says of these men who have accompanied us all the time. Right. They needed to choose a decision needed to be made. OK. And so two were proposed based on what verse 23 says. You got Joseph and then you have Matthias. OK, so they did engage in prayer. They did seek the Lord to figure out who else would be numbered amongst them who have been a witness, you know, of Jesus in his ministry. And so they engaged in prayer and the lot had fell upon Matthias. Okay. The lot fell upon Matthias. Now, one thing, of course, I'm one that really believes in also looking into the power of names. So, you know, verse 23, where it mentions, you know, Barsabas and of course, um, Matthias. I know Barsabas means son of the Sabbath. Okay, son of the Sabbath. That's what I researched and found out. Okay. And where it says justice, it, that just means, you know, the righteous. It was Joseph's Latin name. Okay. And then we have Matthias. And Matthias, his name means gift of God. Gift of God. Okay. And so, again, the lots fell upon uh, Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. And so here's what I have to say. Some people say, well, I, I'm not really sure, you know, how all, how all of these verses here may apply. Of course, there's a couple of confirmations. One, you know, just knowing that they've all come together, all of these leaders coming together, engaging in time of prayer and supplication, right? So it stresses the importance of unity and coming together and communicating with God. And of course, we're seeing this example amongst the early church, right? And so it's important, therefore, that even the church today, leaders today, especially now in the time in which we're living in, come together unified in prayer. Very, very important that this happens, okay? And then, of course, whenever a leader has to be chosen for a specific assignment, something important that needs to be done, um, the leaders need to come together you know, to make a unified decision and they need to consult with the Lord. You need to consult with the Lord whenever a, a leader needs to be chosen. Okay, so if there's something specific that needs to take place, if there's something that, you know, where, um, you know, someone else and someone needs to be chosen for any type of office, you know, I believe it's important that leaders consult with the Lord. And not, of course, just making a random decision, but consulting with the Lord to, de to decide, you know, who will take up a specific office. OK, so this is the this is definitely the the lessons that I'm getting from this. And it's really quite clear. OK, it's coming across quite clear. And we're seeing now a little bit. OK, a lot <laughs> of the role of the Holy Spirit, because think about it in the previous verses. Of course, at the beginning, you know, Jesus ascended back to heaven and then we have you know this time right we have this time where you know they're promised the holy spirit okay so they promise the holy spirit jesus ascends and they're coming together for this meeting you know in jerusalem but there's a huge another huge reason and we're going to delve into that tomorrow okay as we begin chapter number two so you might want to be around for that chapter two uh, is a powerful chapter Okay, very, very powerful chapter. Um, but yeah, just take note of this, you know, the importance of how the early church came together to make critical decisions. And there are some very, very, very important decisions that must take place even now 
as we're going through this time of quarantine and, you know, with this thing going on around the world, you know, decisions still need to be made. So we still need to be consulting and, and just meeting together. And we can do that virtually. OK, we can do that virtually and engage in prayer to seek God. Definitely seek God, repent, seek God, receive direction from him. It's very important during these times that we do this. All right, everybody. So what I want to do right now is I do want to transition. OK, let's transition to part number two of this virtual Bible study. Now, it does involve uh, really reviewing the lesson from yesterday. And the lesson that we focused on yesterday was creative ways to share your faith, right? Creative ways to share your faith. And so you might not, you might not have been here yesterday morning. It's okay. And so these are the reasons why we have questions that are going to be answered right now in review of what we spoke about and what we learned on yesterday morning. So let's go over those questions really quick. And then after doing that, we're going to go into the new lesson connected to winning souls for the kingdom, because that's what this series, this new series, the second part is about winning souls for the kingdom, helping other people to enter the kingdom of God. So there are about, let's see, there are about five questions that have asked. Okay. And so we're going to go over these five questions right about now. Now, hopefully you're ready. Okay. All right. So the first question I asked was, why do you think giving a dollar bill would establish credibility with young people? Now, of course, if you've missed this, you know, here's what I will tell you. What we will do, okay, because we're going over the questions, uh, I'll definitely try to see if we can get the link for the stream from yesterday, and I'll make sure that it is added in the support group. Now, you will see that support group link floating on my timeline several times throughout the day today so that if you want access to that group freely, uh, you just want to just click on the link and you'll be allowed in that group. Okay. So the question number one is, why do you think giving a dollar bill would establish credibility with young people? You see, here's the answer. Giving money helps establish credibility with listeners because people rarely get something for nothing. OK, they rarely get something for nothing. You know, people are astounded that you give them a dollar for merely answering a question. OK, now we know, of course, nowadays with the value of money, we know that a dollar is not, you know, it's not much, but it does get people's attention. OK, it does. Here's the question number two. Why ask your listeners questions? OK, why ask? your listeners questions here's what i say you know asking questions gives you a chance to interact with people okay and perhaps laugh with them you know once you've established a rapport they're more willing to listen to you okay they're more willing to listen to you question number 3 why should you quote scripture when witnessing, why should you quote scripture when witnessing? Okay, here's the answer to that. Scripture should be quoted because the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, just like the word says, and it cannot return void, right? Now, if you need some scripture reference, you want to go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. OK, Hebrews four, verse 12. And then there's another scripture, Isaiah 55 and 11. OK, so the two scripture I'm referencing here, Hebrews four and 12, and then also Isaiah 55 and 11. All right. So, yeah, quote scripture when you're witnessing. That's why it's important to know the word for yourself. OK. Here's question number four. Question number four is this. What is the responsibility? Okay, what is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit in witnessing? Okay, what role does the Holy Spirit play when it comes to witnessing? Okay, see, the job of the Holy Spirit is to draw the sinner, right? To draw him and to convict him or her of sin 
of righteousness and of judgment. Okay? So the Holy Spirit draws a sinner and convicts him or her of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Powerful. Powerful. This is the reason why, you know, when talking with people, you know how they tell you, don't judge me, right? I feel like I'm being judged. No, here's the correction. Here's what's really going on, right? Especially if you're doing this the right way. What's truly going on is that you're feeling you're being convicted by the Holy Spirit, but you feel that you're judging me, um, that I'm judging you because you're looking at it from a natural eye. You're not looking at it from a, a spiritual perspective. You're not, you're not seeing who is really at work. Who is really at work is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is convicting you, right? Okay. And here's the fifth and final question that really kind of helps out in reviewing the lesson from yesterday. The fifth question is this. What is our responsibility as Christians? What is our responsibility as Christians? You see, our job as Christians, believers, is really, really is to faithfully plant the seed of God's word in the heart of the sinner. You got to write, you got to highlight the answer. Make sure you highlight this answer. <laughs> Powerful. We re- it's our job. We have to plant the seed of God's word in the heart of the sinner. We're seed sowers. We are seed sowers. So you got to plant. And if you don't know, listen, if you have, how are you going to plant something that you don't have? So you got to get some word. How do you get some word? <laughs> Open up the Bible, okay? Start meditating on his word. Start studying his word, reading. That's why this virtual Bible study can be very, very helpful. It'll help you become a bit more familiar with the word of God. So it's powerful, guys. It's powerful. Hopefully you're getting this, okay? All right. So let's let's transition now. I do want to transition. I want to begin talking about the new lesson. Okay, let's talk about this new lesson, how to really witness to hurting people. Because we're living in a time and a day where people around the world, doesn't matter what cultural background they're in, this this even supersedes culture right now. People around the world are hurting and they need they need God in a huge way. They need to be uplifted. They need to be edified. They need to be encouraged. And so it is our role as the church to be that light, to provide those seeds, those words of encouragement. Okay, but let's talk about it. Okay. Here's how I will share and and begin this new lesson here. You know, an unsaved woman, you know, recently confided in a preacher that she harbored bitterness toward God. You know, because both her father and and her brother were victims of murder, unfortunately. You see, the, the question then arises, how do we witness to a person in such a state like that? How do we witness? Okay. Do we blatantly talk about sin and righteousness and judgment? Now, the answer can be seen in the story of a little boy who was running through some woods, okay? He was running through some woods, you know, and then suddenly he, he tripped over a log and he cut his jugular vein. Yeah, I know. I know. I have to paint this picture for you. He cut his jugular vein, you know, on a stick. His father quickly picked him up and held, you know, his finger tightly on the vein to stop the blood flow as they rushed the child to a hospital, Okay. You know, and as they entered the operating room, the the distressed child held out his thumb to the surgeon. When he had fallen, a splinter of wood had entered his thumb. Now, of course, the good doctor ignored the boy's plea to remove the splinter and immediately set to work on stopping the blood flow from his jugular vein. Now, there are not many, there are not many in the world who escape suffering, okay? You know, 200,000 people were murdered in the United States during the 1990s. That's a huge, that's a huge stat. 
200,000 people were murdered in the United States during the 1990s, leaving perhaps even a million loved ones and, and fight, you know, to really fight bitterness and, and really ask why God allowed, you know, the murder to happen. Now, no doubt, you know, each unsaved person held up a, a, a pained thumb to God when he is more interested in stopping the, the blood flowing from the jugular vein. Okay, we expect God to immediately fix what we consider the most serious wound. You know, when God wants to first deal with the sin issue, that which will be the death and the eternal damnation of us. So if we as believers care about the will of God, you know, and the eternal welfare of, of a person to whom he, we, are, we are speaking, we will go for the jugular. Okay, we will, that we should, <laughs> okay, go for the jugular. Now, we will speak about the sin issue, the sin issue. See, but however, it, it goes without saying that we, we do need to show a deep empathy for the person who is suffering, you know, as we gently take them through the law. Okay, we got to go through the law. It always goes, it always centers back to the law. We already know that. We've, we've confirmed that, right? through our earlier studies, it always goes back to the law. You know, this may require a little practice, but it is something in which each of us, we must be proficient. If we want to see the lost come to Christ, we have to be proficient in that. Now, this is how best to handle the sensitive issue of witnessing to someone who is hurting. Okay. Tell him or her that you are sorry about his loss or her loss, okay? Tell him or her that you're sorry for their loss. And again, make sure that you show genuine sensitivity. Show genuine sensitivity. Then do what a surgeon would do with the severed jugular vein. You want to turn immediately to the serious issue at hand. You know, which is the person's salvation, right? The person's salvation. Now, unless you know that the deceased was a Christian, you want to stay clear of any talk about whether or not the loved one went to heaven or hell by saying that God is, that, that God is good and he will do what is right on judgment day. And we know that he will. Okay, say something like this. When we are confronted with the issue of death, it can often make us think about God and, and about our own eternal salvation. Do you ever think about God? Do you consider yourself to be a good person? So you can say something like that. Okay, let me repeat it one more time. You can say something like, you know, when we are confronted with the issue of death, it can often make us think about God and about our own eternal salvation. You know, do you ever think about God? Do you ever consider yourself to be a good person? So then you, then you gently take him through the law, okay? At that particular point. See, if there is any offense, apologize and change the subject. But more than likely, you will find that by talking about his or her personal salvation, it will be like a complete subject change. And it won't be offensive at all. Okay. Now, if he or she has any bitterness towards God that is hindering him or her from really opening their heart, you want to gently let that person know that many people have suffered terrible losses in this life. Okay. And that, you know, they have, they have let that suffering bring them to the cross and as a result to everlasting life too. Okay. Now, an analogy that may be helpful is to say that if someone offers to lift you out of, for example, quicksand, right? If somebody offered to lift you out of quicksand, don't let the fact that you don't like the color of their skin or you can't understand why they are wearing certain clothes stop you from giving your hand to your rescuer. It's not about that. You see, God offers to lift us out of the quicksand of death itself. He is offering that. And so you want to tell this person this, tell them this. Let God pull you out. And once you are, once you are saved, 
ask your questions. If you don't get an answer in this life, you are guaranteed to get one in the next one. That's what I would say. Okay? So let me repeat that one more time. Okay? Let God pull you out. And once you're saved, you can ask your questions. Now, if you don't get an answer in this life, you are guaranteed to get one in the next one, the next life. So you can say something like that. See, you know, all of these are helpful ideas of ways to to communicate with those who are hurting and helping them, you know, to enter the kingdom of God. Remember how Jesus witnessed, you know, he always first touched bases in the natural sense. Okay. You don't want to go, you don't want to be insensitive. Okay. You don't want to be insensitive. So hopefully this has been helpful, everybody. I'm going to pause and stop right there because I know I can say a lot about this. And of course, you know, bringing it all home, connecting it to people who are, especially people who may have been impacted by this pandemic. You know, a lot of people are hurting. And to ignore it quite, you know, doesn't quite make sense because it's here and it's impacted the entire world. Okay. In different ways. I'll say it that way. Okay. Now I have included some questions. You might've seen a link nearby. Okay, if you see a link, that link is for the questions to what we've just gone over as far as how to witness to hurting people. All right, so you have questions there. Now, if you're the type of person you like to memorize verses, um, again, you want to become familiar with scripture and memorize verses, I do recommend for this new lesson, I do recommend Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. Okay, Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. Now, this that verse says, Everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or wife or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Everlasting life. Okay, so it's just a verse that I would choose. Now, of course, you can memorize any verse that you desire, okay? Um, But yeah, that was my recommendation, okay? Now, keep in mind, like I said, I am going to send out, I'm going to share the link several times on my timeline throughout the course of the day. Now, when it actually starts, the sharing would actually start probably after 12 o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time uh, because there's quite a few things I need to get done before then, Okay. And so I appreciate every single one of you guys being here with the virtual Bible study with me. All right. Set your alarm to be back here, 830 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow morning. Remember, we do this Monday through Saturdays. OK, not I'm, I don't want to say every Monday through Saturday because God calls for me to rest at times. And so, you know, I am obedient to that. OK, so Monday through Saturdays, 830 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure again to like or love the stream and share this out. Be a blessing. Okay, be a blessing. Okay, be a blessing. I know I'm looking at the comments. Uh, Wendell says, are we getting it? Question is, what do we do with it? Now, of course, I'm trying to. uh, Now, if you want to add some clarity to that, uh, Brother Wendell, what do we do with it? Ah, you know, definitely provide clarity there. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pray so that we can be dismissed. So let us pray. So Father God in heaven, Lord, we thank you so very much for this time of, of, of devotion together, participating by way of social media and the internet. God, we thank you so much for enabling us to come together to read your word, to study the word, to get a greater understanding of the early church and the importance of consulting you when it comes to leadership, positions, roles, even just making decisions, how the church was an example of that, the early church. And so God, may we consult you with decisions that we need to make on a daily basis. And even giving us greater understanding, we thank you, giving us greater understanding on how to witness to those who are hurting so that we would be able to win them to you and and, and they would be able to have a relationship with you. And so we continue to ask that you give us the words we ought to say 
when communicating uh, through social media, by phone, and in person. And so, God, we thank you so much for this opportunity you've given. And we just ask that you would use us however way you see fit, that your will would be done. Not ours, but yours. And so, God, continue to strengthen us, continue to help us to walk in health and in wholeness all the days of our lives. Continue to allow your angels to watch over not just ourselves, but every member of our households, our extended family, that you would have a hedge of protection around them as well. And so, God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the new doors you're opening up for us. We thank you for helping us in making critical decisions, being wise managers over all that you've given unto us to manage, because we all know that it belongs to you. And we just, we're just praying, God, that more and more people would open up their hearts to enter the kingdom, that more souls would be saved. So God, we thank you for it right now for knowing that if a person believes with their heart and if they confess with their mouths the Lord Jesus, that they too shall be saved. And so Father, we thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen, amen, and amen. And so everyone, thank you once again for being here. Uh, we're looking forward to having a pleasant, pleasant rest of our day. And Lord willing, coming back tomorrow morning for another session with the virtual Bible study. So remember, I love each and every one of you. And God loves you all the more. Be blessed and have an amazing Friday.